In this video, some of the same information will repeat in various ways to aid you in memorization. The most important mnemonic you will see is this one. However, I highly advise listening to the whole video to reap all the benefits. Sensory columns. You have somatic, visceral, and special sensory columns. The somatic sensory column is for feeling touch, pain, and temperature. It includes the trigeminal nucleus, which is the biggest of the nuclei. This is responsible for letting you feel your face. The visceral sensory column includes the nucleus of the tractus solitarius, which is responsible for the baroreception reflex, involving blood pressure, and the chemoreception reflex, monitors blood pH, oxygen, CO2. An easy way to remember this is to think of a solitary guy who is thinking of love, you know, since barrow and chemoreception have to do with the heart. The special sensory column. What's the difference between a special sense and a general sense? A special sense has a specialized organ devoted to it. This includes olfaction, audition, vision, balance, and gustation. General senses include pain, touch, pressure, vibration, proprioception, and temperature. The special sensory column includes the vestibular and cochlear nuclei, as well as the gustatory nucleus. You can remember this by thinking of these nuclei as providing a balanced diet. Motor columns. You have somatic, visceral, and branchial motor columns. The somatic motor column includes the oculomotor, trochlear, abducens, and hypoglossal nuclei. The first three are, as you can guess, associated with cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6. These cranial nerves are wired to control the muscles that move your eyeballs. The hypoglossal nucleus, again, as you might guess, is associated with cranial nerve 12, and it is in a category of its own because it is involved in movements of the tongue. So, in summary, the somatic motor column controls movements of your eyes and tongue. I'm assuming you, the viewer, are a human. However, if you were a hungry cyclops, that's all you'd care about, my optic friend. The visceral motor column includes the edinger westphal nucleus, which constricts the pupils and controls lens accommodation. The superior and inferior salivatory nuclei, which control secretions from glands in your head, Note that secreting stuff from glands is also considered motor, so remember to differentiate between somatic muscle motor and autonomic motor. And finally, the dorsal vagal nucleus, which is secretal motor to the viscera in your thorax and abdomen. So in summary, you can think of it as allowing you to constrict your pupils, salivate, and digest. The branchial motor column includes the facial nucleus, which controls facial expressions, the nucleus ambiguous, which controls muscles of the pharynx, larynx, and palate, and the accessory nucleus, which controls the sternal mastoid and upper trapezius muscles. You can remember the three components of the branchial motor column as a woman shopping and being unable to decide on which accessory to get. Now, here is a chart summarizing for each of the cranial nerves, whether they have sensory, motor, special sensory, or autonomic functions. You've probably all heard of this mnemonic. But how do you know if it's referring to sensory or special sensory, motor or autonomic? Well, I offer you a new mnemonic. Each word containing an S, an M, an SS, or an A is one of the cranial nerves, in order. Okay, let's look at these four categories. Sensory, motor, special sensory, autonomic, and see which cranial nerves serve each. For sensory, there is the trigeminal nerve, which allows your face to feel pain, temperature, and touch. There is the facial nerve, which senses touch for a small area of skin behind your ear. There is the glossopharyngeal nerve, which intuitively you can think of as having to do with your mouth and throat. In fact, it provides sensation to the posterior third of your tongue, your tonsils, your pharynx, and your eardrum. Why the eardrum? Well, if you think about it, you have a eustachian tube, the passageway between your pharynx and middle ear. So that makes sense. Then there's the vagus nerve, which provides sensation to your meninges, lower pharynx, larynx, and external ear. Motor. So this includes all cranial nerves except 1, 2, and 8. So... The oculomotor, trochlear, and abducens control muscles moving your eyes. The oculomotor is the main motor and takes on four of the six muscles. The trochlear whips the superior oblique into action, and the abducens spurs on the lateral rectus. The trigeminal nerve, tisk tisk tisk. How typical of humans. The largest cranial nerve innervates the muscles of mastication. The facial nerve. This controls your facial expressions. Duh. The glossopharyngeal is a pain in the arse. It controls the stylopharyngeal what? Muscle. Hmm. Vegas. 
a place where you can talk a lot and eat a lot of good food and use your vagus nerve to power the muscles of your larynx, pharynx, and palate muscles. The accessory nerve. This innervates the sternucleomastoid and the upper trapezius. The hypoglossal. Intuitively, again, it involves the mouth. It powers all intrinsic and all except one extrinsic muscle in the tongue. Special sensory. Remember, this includes anything to do with the special senses. Olfaction, audition, vision, balance, gustation. Let's dive in. The olfactory nerve picks up smells from the olfactory epithelium. The optic nerve observes inputs from your retina. Interestingly, the facial nerve gets taste from the anterior two-thirds of your tongue. Your vestibulocochlear nerve helps you balance via inputs from your semicircular canals and lets you listen to your signed Justin Bieber album via inputs from your cochlea. The glossopharyngeal nerve lets you taste with the back third of your tongue. Vegas! Yes! Now you can not only swallow that delicious food, but also get more taste sensations from your palate and pharynx. Phew! Last category! Autonomic, your oculomotor nerve. Wow! Not only does it control four out of six muscles moving each eyeball, it also allows for pupillary constriction and lens accommodation. Your facial nerve has a secretomotor function. All the glands in your head, except the parotid glands, can thank it for their ability to secrete stuff. The glossopharyngeal nerve is the one that takes over the parotid gland. You can remember this in association with the nerve's motor function. Only a parent would be able to say, stylopharyngeus, stylopharyngeus, over and over without going crazy. The glossopharyngeal nerve has another autonomic function. It measures blood pressure as well as pH and O2 levels. Are we done? Are we done? Vegas! That's where I'm headed after this blasted exam. There, I'll enjoy some good food and my vagus nerve will perform autonomic functions. After all, it is secretomotor to glands of my pharynx and larynx, my thoracic and abdominal viscera. As a bonus, it also provides visceral sensory input from these same thoracic and abdominal viscera down to the splenic flexure. Let's look at this material from yet another angle. What cranial nerves are associated with each of the cranial nuclei? Here are the cranial nuclei. Edinger westphal and oculomotor associate with the oculomotor nerve. Trochlear goes with the trochlear nerve. The masticator nucleus goes with the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nucleus takes on the trigeminal facial glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves. The abducens nucleus pairs with the abducens nerve. The facial nucleus goes with the facial nerve. The superior and inferior salivatory nuclei go with the facial and glossopharyngeal nerves. The dorsal vagal nucleus goes with the vagal nerve. The nucleus of the tractus solitarius goes with the facial, glossopharyngeal, and vagus nerves. Ooh, not so solitary after all. The vestibular and cochlear nuclei go with the vestibulocochlear nerve. The nucleus ambiguus has input from the glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves, but only a bit from the glossopharyngeal. The accessory nucleus goes with the accessory nerve, and the hypoglossal nucleus goes with the hypoglossal nerve. Now some tips to remember this. The superior and inferior salivatory nuclei need cranial nerves 7 and 9. So does the nucleus of the tractus solitarius, but you just add cranial nerve 10. The trigeminal nucleus takes the cake. It has the most cranial nerves providing input. Now, the highlighted nuclei are the ones which get input from the cranial nerves with the same name. One last section to cover, cranial nerve functions. Again, here are the nuclei. Edinger-Westphal allows pupil constriction and lens accommodation. The oculomotor controls four out of six extraocular muscles. The trochlear takes on the superior oblique. The masticator nucleus powers muscles of mastication, which are muscles of chewing. The trigeminal nucleus lets you feel touch, pain, and temperature in your face, as well as in your oral and nasal cavities, sinuses, larynx, pharynx, meninges, and scalp. The abducens controls your lateral rectus. Thank your facial nucleus for letting you smile at your crush or frown at your ex. The salivatory nuclei allow you to secrete stuff from glands in your head. Your dorsal vagal nucleus lets your thoracic and abdominal viscera secrete stuff. The nucleus of the tractus solitarius allows for visceral reflexes and includes the gustatory nucleus, which allows you to taste all that food from vagus. The vestibular nucleus lets you balance. The cochlear nucleus lets you hear. The nucleus ambiguous lets you move your palate, pharynx, and, in my opinion, the most important, your larynx muscles. The accessory nucleus innervates your sternomastoid and upper trapezius. Lastly, your hypoglossal nucleus lets you move all intrinsic and all but one extrinsic muscle of the tongue, allowing for the production of this awesome video.